Okay, this is a World War II era corner reflector. It says open package from this line, has a U.S. Navy uh, stamp on here. So let's open this thing up. This is new old stuff. Um, you know, during the war, they made so much stuff that, uh, wow, it's a lot of the, you know, the package is just old. They made so much stuff that there's a lot of it around to this day. So it says MX138A radar corner reflector instructions to erect. Secure loose uh, end of 10 foot securing line to a boat. Remove chafing covers from each end. Insert hub in one section of OR handle. That's cool. So this goes into an OR handle here. Uh, and twist and, uh, until the snap buttons engage. Stand over or upright on boat. Carefully unwrap wire mesh from around the metal arms. Shake and pull gently to loosen arms from each other. Unfold arm to which this tag is attached and hold as far downward as possible. Okay, pull down. Okay, let's just... Okay, here's a sort of a close-up of the uh, radar reflector. This sticks into your oar, and some screenshots of the instructions, because I don't think these instructions will make it through the disassembly process. Okay, here we are. I've unpacked this piece, and I've removed the equipment tag, and this is so interesting. Uh, this tag would be attached to it via the string, and you could see how uh, this thing would go on your life raft. And there's the trihedral corner reflector. And it would mount to the oar like that and stand up vertically in your life raft so you could be picked up on radar. Not unlike um, radar reflectors on boats today. And so I'm going to continue to unwind this. Uh, here's a lanyard. This is just a long lanyard that goes off the end. So we're actually going to use this in a series of experiments. This will give me a very high RCS. This was probably used because of the UHF uh, search radars incorporated at that time. They had uh, Their UHF radar units had the longest range, uh, the marine uh, UHF radars in the warships. Uh, so I would think that this would be very valuable, especially uh, at lower frequencies. So um, that's probably why it's so big. Like the uh, SC radars, for example or I believe 200 megahertz. Okay, we'll keep unwinding this thing. So. Uh, I want unwound the top part. It's just this, this lanyard here. There's a loop in it and a little uh, latch here. And then this one has no loop or latch at the end. And I'm about to unfold this whole thing. Okay, I'm gonna videotape on. Uh, taking this thing apart, so opening it up. So here we go. <laughs> it's like, so I've started unwinding. I've got gloves on because the metal is a little, it does dig into my skin a little bit. And we're gonna try to set this thing up. It's tricky. It should probably be on the end of the oar, but this would be a lot easier. Okay, coming apart. Just gonna take it easy, we don't want to damage anything. hasn't moved in decades. I also don't hurt anything by doing any of this. Alright, I think what I'll do is I'm going to um, put this on a tripod and then try to pull it that way. And try to make it look like the picture. 
Okay, this thing's a complete mess, but I think I've got it. Uh, basically, I had to unhook all of the, um, the little hooks here in the middle. And the problem is this cloth is uh, not flexing that much. And this is, this is part of the issue. I took my gloves off. But, but the cloth is uh, too dry and old that it's not flexing enough to let me pop this thing open. So um, what I do is unhook the hooks. And I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll just use paracord to attach everything back together as best as I can. I just need a huge RCS target for an experiment I'm working on. I think this will do the trick. A little bit more work and I think we'll have a version of this set up. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is the huge triedral. It's, I mean, it's big. And um, I had to end up cutting, I had to cut um, the, I had to cut the cord in the middle here to get this thing to fold out because I realized that, that this this stuff was not flexible enough to do what I had to do. So I cut the middles, and then I'm going to retape this uh, with copper tape, make sure it's conductive uh, for the experiment that we'll be running here. But uh, yeah, the World War II trihedral is back in business. Okay, look at this thing. It's huge. This is the World War II trihedral corner reflector, and it does look just like the uh, image. And so the key was to break the middle of these things because the this uh, cloth here is no longer flexible. And I've actually taped them over with copper tape because it's important that they're uh, conductive, and, and this copper tape grabs the the. Uh, the mesh here, which I bet is just a tin copper material. So uh, now I'm going to, um, actually a few things, points of interest. We have, as you can see, here's one of the reflectors. Uh, there's one up here, there's one down here, one here, one there, and nothing underneath, which kind of makes sense because uh, you're going to want uh, people to pick you up from the side and the top uh, air to ground search as well as the side. So this is pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to tape these over with Gorilla Tape for additional structural reinforcement. And then uh, we'll, we'll be all done building this corner reflector. Okay, here is the uh, trihedral from World War II, uh, fully deployed, and I've got the um, tape. I taped over the copper pieces just to add some structural integrity. I will never <laughs> fold this thing up again. Um, here's the, uh, I removed a, there's a line cord that's on there tied in the bowl and around here. I got rid of that. Um, and uh, it's ready for, uh, for some testing.